um, back in the new year after a small break for uh, Christmas and New Year and uh, getting the year started. So welcome everybody again with uh, Sean Devlin presenting a fresh and new uh, topic. And I think it's actually one topic we forgot with the 8.4 launch, uh, Sean. Is that right? Well, I don't know if we forgot it, but we just didn't have time to squeeze it in. So. Oh, okay. All righty. Excellent. So today we're going to talk about uh, building a list use and uh, some new ways of doing that in Servoy 8.4. If you do have any questions, then feel free to post them in the questions channel. We will be uh, keeping a close eye on uh, on that, so feel free to uh, to do that. And as usual, you can find an archive of all the recordings on uh, the tech webinar section on our website. So if you would like to see more webinars, feel free to go there. If you're, if you're a frequent uh, user of uh, YouTube, you can also subscribe to the Servoy YouTube channel uh, simply by Googling for uh, Servoy YouTube, and then you'll get there pretty quickly. With that out of our way, uh, Sean, welcome to the stage. Thanks, Sean. Um, yeah, today's topic is, as you said, kind of um, a leftover from what you can see from the past uh, webinars. We did a three-part series to kick off uh, the 8.4 release uh, back before the new year. And there was one one feature in there that um, uh, was a, a bit too big to squeeze in uh, with one of the other webinars. And uh, it's a bit small for a webinar on its own, but uh, so today might be a little bit short, but that's okay. Uh, let everyone get back to work or we'll leave plenty of room for questions. Um, so let's get into it. I'm gonna do a demo of a new, um, a new component that was released with 8.4 called a list list view form component. Uh, I'll show a small demo and then we'll do a conceptual overview about the component and give you guys a chance to understand um, sort of how to use it and, and what it's for. With that said, we'll jump into a brief demo. So uh, on my browser screen, you can see a basic form that I built this morning. And I'd like to focus your attention on the left side of the screen where we see this sort of repeating body list view going on here. Um, this is showing uh, uh, one sort of card for each record. And this is the, this is the component that we're going to be going over today. Um, this is a list view which is data bound. So you can see that it is in sync with the found set that I have to the right. So every time I select a new card, you can see that the items and the shipping address and stuff are updated on the right-hand side. So it is a data-bound component like uh, any other um, <clears throat> any other component. Uh, you can also see that if I were to search up here, I live in the U.S. and I love coffee, so that's why I put that in. Uh, you can see that it is, uh, it is in sync with the found set of the form. Um, you'll also notice that this particular uh, card is, is interactive. I've put some hyperlinks in here. You could link those to uh, certain actions. Um, you could also uh, put in buttons or font icons. So here, let's say I want to mark this item as uh, my favorite, uh, and now it becomes uh, highlighted. If I were to, I don't know, go somewhere else, say look at German orders uh, for coffee and mark two of those as my favorite and then go back, that it's, uh, you can see that it's data bound. So um, the point that I wanted to show there is that uh, you can take action on these forms. You can edit data on them. They're fully functional, uh, repeating sort of uh, um, UI components. Uh, I could also say archive this record. I don't want to look at it anymore, that sort of thing. Um, so that's kind of the gist of what I want to show you. Uh, the next part would be to take a look under the hood and see how does one build a list view in Servoy 8.4 for the NG client. Uh, so uh, first of all, I want to show you an area of the Solution Explorer uh, right here called Form Components. Now we introduced Form Components in Servoy 8.3 and basically what they allow you to do is to design a form that you can then reuse in other places uh, like uh, any other component that you would add to, uh, to a screen. Um, so it really gives you the power to do uh, sort of customization and reusability throughout your application. And you can see here that I created a, uh, a form component called orders list. And when I open that over here in the form editor, 
uh, it looks like any other form that I'm designing. Um, the only thing that uh, it does not have is a scripting scope. So um, a traditional form always has a JavaScript file associated with it, and you can scope your variables and methods uh, within that form. Uh, because this is uh, a meant to be reusable in sort of instances, it doesn't make sense that it would have its own scripting scope. However, it can uh, bind to uh, entity, um, the entity scopes and top-level scopes. It can also adapt to the scripting scope of the form in which it's, it's uh, placed. Uh, so um, again, I just placed some, some elements on this form which are data bound. You can see I used a lot of um, merge text, so that's data-driven text. And every time this small sort of real estate uh, is rendered once for each record, um, all of the dynamic stuff in the form is evaluated per each record, and that's how I'm able to get you know the different values. So I don't have to write any code to do that. That's that's sort of uh, baked into the component. Um, I did make uh, some of these items clickable. For example, uh, when I click on the heart, I have um, an on action handler. And you'll notice that if I was to, um, if I was setting up my list view uh, component uh, and I wanted to run some business logic, uh, when I open this up, you'll notice that form is disabled. That's because again, uh, there is no scripting scope for form components. Uh, the method toggle favorite here, uh, I do want to point out something else here because the type of component that I placed on, on this form is for this particular heart icon is something called an on render label. And you can find it in the Servoy Extra Components library and you drag those on, on the screen. And, and the reason they're called on render label and what they're useful for is that they have this thing called a style class expression, uh, meaning there's an expression that gets evaluated again once per record, and it allows you to dynamically style uh, that component for the given context that is shown. And so when I come back here and you see that I go back to one that has more records, you can see that this one was rendered with the pink heart and the other ones get the gray heart unless the, the state of the record changes. So looking at that method, uh, I implemented it in, in entity scope, which is kind of like a scripting scope for just for that record or that found set. Uh, it's disconnected from the UI and I toggle the favorite. So if it's, if it's not marked as a favorite, I set it to, it's a binary flag one or zero uh, and it switches. Uh, there is the style class data provider for that, which if you look at the next one, um, or this one up here, uh, this is a, you combine this to a calculation. I have to move my go to meeting tool to get to it, this little uh, arrow there. Uh, this is a calculation that I've implemented, and, and for those of you new to Servoy, calculations are like dynamic columns that are evaluated every time uh, you request it. So, this is evaluated once for every uh, row in the, or every repeating body section in the list view. And it's saying basically, if, if this record is marked as favorite, then uh, return the style class favorite, otherwise return the style class null. So the final piece of the puzzle is, well, what is the style class favorite? Uh, if we look at the CSS for this application, I have a style class here called favorite and the color is that lovely pink that highlights the heart when it's marked favorite. So just to sort of summarize it here, uh, this is being styled by a, an expression that returns the name of the style class and all the styling information can be in there. It's not just background colors, you can do borders and you know whatever you can do in CSS. So uh, the reason I showed you that is because when you're doing something that has a repeating body, especially, um, you will probably take advantage of these um, on-render uh, labels, which is another component right here in the um, <clears throat> in the Servoy Extra library. Now, uh, so far I've shown you how we designed the, uh, the form. Uh, now how do we use this somewhere else? So uh, again, I went to form components, not to forms, and I did to create new form component. And then I got the form designer and everything else about this is the same minus the scripting scope. I have another form here called orders. And you can see that, um, make some more room here for you so that you can actually see. Uh, you can see that 
on this form, I included uh, the list view component and then some other stuff like the, the, the details of the order and the shipping information and the map. Um, so this whole item here is the is the list view form component. Now, the way that I placed that on the form is I came down to my Servoy Extra Components library and I grabbed list view, list view form component and you can see that my form shows up there, or my form component rather, shows up there and I drag it onto the onto the screen and, and drop it there and, and then that's how it's, uh, it's added. Uh, you'll also notice that in the default section, there is also a form component container and I could also add it that way, but that would not be the repeating body list view. So this is this has been here since Servoy 8.3. And again, you can use this to make reusable um, sort of subsets of UI, you know, uh, make your own component essentially uh, as a form. Uh, and you can use this, uh, but it will not repeat. If you use the list view form component from the Servoy Extra library, uh, that one will repeat uh, once per record. And you'll notice that um, this component, if I inspect its properties, uh, has its own properties. It has a contain form and then also the, bound set, the found set to which it's bound. So by default, it binds to the same found set as the form on which it's being placed, but I could use a related found set or a named found set or a global relation, something like that if I wanted to. So it's, it's entirely possible to bind this to something else, its own separate found set. In this case, it's uh, sharing with the form. Uh, so once once I've placed the form component on my form, uh, everything else kind of works after that if for the view that you saw. But I do want to point out that um, it, although it's like a template, these things can be replicated um, or and extended. So uh, for example, I can take the uh, I don't know the order total label here. And, and this is not no longer the blueprint on the orders list. This is the, the sort of the instance. And if I wanted to change that text, then I could come in here. Let's say I'm just going to call it total and not order total. I click OK. You can see that it renders now as total. But if I were to come back to the blueprint, it still shows order total. So I've sort of overridden that property. Uh, and you can see the namespace of the form component as well uh, if I were to show the outline view. So the window show view outline. Maybe we'll drag that uh, onto this view here. That's nice. So, so now you can see that there's a sort of namespacing. I have elements dot list view form component. And then I actually have the properties of each component or each named component. Uh, on that uh, form component. So I can go in and, and inspect, say, this order total and, and see the change that I made. If I wanted to revert that, I could right click and click restore default value. It won't put it back to blank, but it'll put it back to what was on the original blueprint, on the original form component. So in that way, there's a sort of inheritance, although it's not an inheritance of um, code, it's just an inheritance of of UI properties that are going on here, which allows you to sort of uh, make little blueprints and then go and, and change them all throughout your application. That's it. Um, and we'll see you guys in two weeks. And um, in four weeks, we'll be doing an, uh, another uh, quarterly release uh, as well. And we'll do a webinar for every quarterly release.